Welcome and thank you for joining us for this BMC Client Management Overview. My name is Joel Jacks. I am Technical Marketing for the BCM product, and I'm joined by Serena Lambiase. Hi, Joel. Thanks for doing this. We've had a lot of people ask to give us an overview, a little bit about what we do with BMC Client Management, so let's take a look at it. So what is BCM? That's the first question. What is BMC Client Management? A little bit about BCM. It is an automated endpoint management solution, and Joel is going to be showing you some of the things that BCM can do. We have over 1,200 active customers right now in maintenance, and that is over 5 million managed devices that they are managing using BCM. One thing not a lot of people know is that BCM is available on-premises on, in your environment with your hardware and software and also on-demand. So if you want BMC to manage that uh, hardware and, and network infrastructure for you, that's something we can do as well. Right. And so people understand, too, is this product's been around for a while. Um, it used to be called Asset Core. But one of our focuses is that we want people to know that it is a full end-to-end -end client asset management piece. This is just a sampling of some of the types of customers that we have, some names you might recognize, others you might not. But the point is there are, you know, like I said, over 1,200 customers using BCM today, all different types of companies, and they all have the same needs, whether they're pharmaceuticals, electric, energy, stock exchange, musical equipment, um, news, etc., education, all different kinds of companies can get the same benefits out of using a tool like BCM to automate their endpoint management. And our endpoint management goes from a customer we have who has over 200,000 endpoints that they're managing down to some customers that are managing maybe 50 to 100 endpoints. Exactly. There's no limit or minimum or maximum on how many uh, endpoints you can manage with BCM. It's highly scalable through the topology that uh, we're going to cover in a minute. Some of the things uh, we hear from customers and uh, people that are looking at an automated endpoint management solution are, so those are the challenges they face around managing different types of devices. You can see there, you know, a tablet, you've got a laptop, people have desktops, mobile phones, all these different types of devices. And challenge number one is really how do you keep track of these things? How do you even get a, a handle on being able to manage them? Right, and if it's automated, it makes it easier. Most customers who are trying to manage these systems are doing it in spreadsheets. And we know that the minute a spreadsheet is, that you hit save on it, it's it's out of date. So something that can show you that mapping and pull it all together is, is vital to a lot of our customers. Exactly. People are uh, just overloaded with tons of information, uh, lots of manual files, forms, like you said, whether it's uh, even Excel, but some people are still using paper forms to, to manage things and emails. Uh, it's just a lot of data, a lot of information to, to manage. That's why automation uh, with a tool like BCM is so helpful. From a Infrastructure perspective, there are a lot of different users out there all over the world. Some people have uh, many, many different locations and have a hard time managing that. Even, even departments within a large organization, it can get complicated to manage all of those devices, whether it's servers or laptops, desktops, and mobile devices. In addition, once you have, let's imagine you have thousands of uh, servers and or desktops and laptops, there are a lot of different operating systems out there. There's Mac, there's Linux, Windows, um, iOS devices. All these different types of devices also uh, require management, and to be able to do that all in one place is one of the challenges that our customers face. As well, the service desk agents who take calls from users using all these different devices with all these different operating systems and all that data have to use tools to help them manage that and troubleshoot and help those users when they call in. So being able to do that from one place in the service desk with an integrated automated endpoint management tool helps them a lot, and that's a challenge a lot of customers tell us about. I was recently at a customer who was looking at using BCM, and they have a tool for ITSM, and they also have a tool for their remote desktop, another one to show their assets, another one for inventory. By the time everything was said and done, I think they had six different tools open at the same time that they had to go from screen to screen about. So while we hear a lot about Windows PCs being the primary 
system that people want to manage. There are a lot of other organizations and a lot of other uh, products out there to manage like Macs and servers. So not just window PC desktops, um, but, you know, in addition, you've got these other operating systems and other types of devices out there. And this is a quote from one of the industry analysts, uh, Gartner, about client management tools. So those are the, again, you know, validating what we're hearing from our customers. Our industry analysts are mentioning those same things. It's, it's hard to manage all of these different types of operating systems and uh, different types of devices. So as we show you the BCM product, we're going to talk about what this is as far as a complete device lifecycle management product. We're going to talk about discovery and inventory. So being able to discover everything in your environment, whether it's IP phone, it's switch, router, hub, desktop, laptop, anything with an IP address. What we're going to manage, though, are going to be your endpoints. Those are going to be the PCs, the laptops, your tablet, iOS devices. We do OS and application deployment that we'll show you, talk you through how to put out an OS to a bare metal system so you don't have to pay your laptop vendors, your endpoint vendors anymore to put uh, operating systems on. That You'll be able to save that cost, put your own images on, and push those out. Not only that, but you're able to put out applications as well things like your SAP or Oracle application, custom applications, or as well as off the shelf that you'll be able to push out. Not only pushing out the applications, but then also being able to understand your software licensing around them. Do you have enough licenses? Or have you purchased too many? Another piece that we offer is a financial asset management. So how much did that endpoint cost you? When is it in service? When are you gonna retire it? What's the warranty information on? Another big piece that people are looking at is the policy compliance. So the ability to adhere to policies that may be organizational as well as industry policies such as PCI or the payment card in industry, HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, all these different compliance things that many organizations find themselves struggling under and proving that they are compliant through audits, being able to maintain that in one area and show that you are compliant. One of the biggest areas of security vulnerabilities within a system is patch management, being able to ensure that products are patched. We hear all the time about all the patches that come out all these Tuesdays from Microsoft, which are great, but there are so many other products out there, your Adobe's, your Java's, different products like that that require updates and patching frequently. So making sure that your systems are updated, they're patched, they're ready to go. The advantage of using a tool like BCM is you could go manually do all these things. You could manually install software on everyone's computer or uninstall it or patch it. But that takes a lot of time and effort. If you have any number of systems, more than I would say 10 or more, then really having a tool to do that, to maintain your compliance, make sure you're correctly patched, especially when you get into thousands of systems, uh, automation and using a tool like BCM is a huge advantage and a huge benefit to time and cost savings and staying in compliance. Exactly. Being able to automate those tools, making sure that even people who are remote out in the field who don't connect into the systems, into your corporate systems that often, are being able to be updated and they're being patched and taken care of as well. Another big piece of this is remote management, is being able to remote into these devices no matter where they're at in the world. As long as they're connected to the internet, we provide a safe and secure way to remote in to provide assistance when things do go wrong with uh, these endpoints. Another key piece is power management. A lot of companies are trying to make sure that they're cutting their power expenses. So one of the things we can do is help them to ensure that systems are shut off each night and that they're only brought up to be patched or that when they're being, when the system isn't being used for more than 30 minutes, that we offer abilities for these companies to shut them down, set up, put them in standby mode. Another piece is event management. If something goes wrong, if we're able to see, for instance, a piece of software uh, that has files lost on it, that we can repair that software without even the user having to call in and to request service. We can do it without them even knowing probably that there was a problem. Through all this, we do device management. What can connect to your laptops and to your desktops? What USB devices do you allow? Do you not allow? Monitors, printers, things like that that are able to cause problems in your system, you can prevent from, from connecting in. And then the My Apps. This is a great piece which offers your customers a view into your software catalog. This catalog is approved items that people call up and ask to be installed all the time. So instead of tying up your help desk agents, 
with installing this software. They can actually go into your catalog, request it, and we can install it automatically. But not just software, other things that may be common tasks within your systems that you guys need to do. For instance, maybe a process gets out of control, being able to have them go into my apps, click on, I kill the process, it'll kill it for them. Instead of having them call the help desk every time that they have an issue, moving their calls more towards where they're solving them on their own and giving them the tools to do that. Exactly. A lot of end users don't want to call the service desk. They want to go get things on their own time, 24-7, any day of the week that they want to go and get an application or anything that they might need. That's what my apps can do for them is self-service. So before we get into the product, let's go ahead and show how we're unique and how we're able to provide all of these different key features in such a lightweight and robust infrastructure. The way that BCM is set up is that you can see here, we have it integrated with an ITSM server. So through our powerful REST API, we can easily integrate with most ITSM products. Native integration that we provide is Footprints, as well as Remedy Force. And soon we'll have others that we can add to that out of the box. But our client management server sits here. And this is the master server. The master server is where we maintain all of the records, all the information that we're going to be providing to the administrators and help desk users as they interact with the BCM product. Here I just brought up a relay agent. And as you can see, our relay agent talks to two different offices, the Los Angeles office and the Singapore office. And what the relay agent does is it gets the things such as patches that need to come down or maybe applications that are most commonly deployed and holds it there on that relay agent so that the work is then done by the relay agent and not the master server. And we're set up in a flexible topology that we can grow as your company grows or as you start spreading this out to your different parts of your company, we can easily put in another relay agent you can see now we've added London and New York, as well as, as we said, we can support you through the DMZ to any of your remote laptops or systems out there, such as salespeople who are out in the field and on the... So now here's the BCM client. This is the screen that your administrators and users are going to see when they first log in. And the idea here is we're giving them one tool and one window to be able to access all the different features and functions within the product. Unlike some other products out there where they have to open up a different window or different modules to go into remote desktop and another one to go into patching, this is all here centralized for your administrator. Another thing we understand about BCM is that because we automate and we've set this up to be an easy to use product, the administrators aren't going to spend a lot of time in this product. They're going to come in, they're going to get the job done that they need to do and leave. And because of that, they may forget certain things or they may need to be led through some of these certain these tasks that they need to do to get their job. So we provide this easy to use format through our wizards. And the wizards you can see are provided up here on the screen, as well as right here on the lower right hand corner. Always prominent, always easy to use. So for instance, let's look at the agent rollout. If we double click on that, it comes up. Joel, the, the wizards in BCM are one of the things customers have said they really find beneficial about the product is it helps them get what they need done more quickly and easily. It is definitely one of the key features that helps us to differentiate ourselves from the other products out there. So for instance, I've selected the agent rollout wizard here, and it's going to walk me through the different steps to be able to roll out my agent to the different areas, those different offices that we showed you earlier and walk through that. But not only do we provide wizards, but we have something very unique called the Instant Expert. So this is a way of not only giving you a wizard to do your job, but also a knowledge base on steroids, which allows you to walk through each of these steps and we'll take you through there and we'll guide you to each step along the way so that you're able to complete the task. But now you've learned how to do it, you can do it on your own if you choose. So for instance, I want to create a device group. You can see that it move, changes my screen for me. It's taking me over here on the left-hand side. It's taking me to the device groups. It's highlighted that, and it's showing me all my groups. Up here at the top, it's going to give me some of the things to look for and pay attention to as I move through. And then I can go ahead and hit the next button. The next button is going to take me through and say, hey, click on the device group icon in the icon bar. I can click on that. I can enter my name for the new group. 
Step three, it says click OK. Now that you've done that, we'll go ahead and hit next. And now it's going to walk me through adding devices and through the whole step and the whole process, changing the screens as I need to throughout the process of creating the device groups. This is great. It's really like built-in training in the product where it teaches you how to use it when you need it. Right. And as you've seen with other products, they give you these big, huge 1500 page manual books to be able to read through and and try and figure out and find your way through here we isolate the different steps out and the different processes out that administrators will do and walk them through that without needing additional training so the next piece in bcm is is our inventory management as i mentioned earlier we can automatically discover anything with an ip address what this allows us to do is not only to remotely discover it, but also to provide management for this. And we can do this agentless or based off an agent. Agentless just means that we're going to go out there and find some basic information, the IP address, maybe the name and the model of the device that uh, is out there. Agent based is for those devices that we're actually going to manage, things that we need a deeper inventory on, things that we want to push patches to, or even deploy software to. So with that inventory, we're able to get all the devices together that we have that are in our system. And as you can see here in the devices that it's got together right here at the top, we have a workstation, a VoIP phone. Maybe this is a remote device, such as a storage network device. Other things that we have are switches. And we go down to our workstations. And within those workstations, we can see, because we have an agent installed, we have more detailed information about them. Our device groups are a really powerful way in which, as a user, you can put groups of devices together in order to manage them and make the job of maintaining them a lot easier. For instance, I could put all of my sales devices together, anybody in the sales department, and provide updates to their sales software as those updates come out and are available and wouldn't impact anybody else's devices. I think it's worth mentioning that you can target certain machines or operating systems that need to be updated okay. or something. Within device groups, we could isolate out certain device groups, such as our Windows uh, 10 devices, and provide updates specifically to them that wouldn't apply to maybe our Mac devices or different devices that have different information. The benefits customers get from BCM is based on the inventory module that Joel talked about. You can go find out what you have and put those machines into a device group that meets certain criteria, whether they have enough memory or, and hard drive space to even accept a new update. That is a good way to uh, make sure that you know you're ready for an upgrade before you even attempt it. Another powerful feature within the BCM product is the ability to deploy OSs. Operating systems can take a lot of time, and a lot of customers find that they have multiple OS images that they have to maintain. So OS deployment provides a way for organizations to quickly maintain and update their OSs in a manner which doesn't require a lot of administrative work for, and a lot of downtime. One of the ways we do that is through bare metal deployment, which we've talked about earlier. You order your systems from your vendor. They ship them to you as a bare metal. You plug them in, and using our Pixie Boot, we're able to determine what the device is and put the OS on it quickly and efficiently. So OS deployment provides an organization the ability to not only do bare metal deployment, but we provide a wizard-driven setup, which allows you to identify certain drivers for certain devices and be able to pull them from a library so that the agent installing the OS doesn't have to search around for drivers. They're automatically put in as that OS is deployed. We will provide you the flexibility that you can decide whether you want to do multicast to a whole department or even to your whole organization or unicast to one or two devices at a time. This byte level differential download that we provide allows you to provide updates to the image and, and move those over to the systems, which they'll be applied to without having to re-image everything or without having to recreate these different images. So Joel, this is a benefit. The byte level differential helps with the network bandwidth. Is that right? As well as time it would take to do those updates. Otherwise, if you're not doing byte level differential, you're re-downloading the entire OS deployment as opposed to just those things that have changed or that are updated or different. Right. Yeah. So especially, like you mentioned, if we're in an organization that has a very low bandwidth connection to our master server, then only that which needs to be changed comes over rather than the whole image itself. And it's another savings too, because we're not having to maintain every possible image that might exist there. It's one image that exists that we're able to then put differentials and that we can build off of. 
So of course, once the OS has been deployed to your system, you need to get all the software packages on that a user may need to use. Now, based off of their device group or a user group, you can automatically assign certain software applications based off of their role within the organization that automatically get installed onto these devices. And this can apply to new images or to existing. So if a user moves from, the, say, the sales department to the HR department, and now it needs the HR application, that's automatically done when they are updated in Active Directory. When we see that, we push that out. Or let's say that new HR employee starts, we get the request for their new machine, we put the operating system on, and once that operating system is put on, we put in all the applications that are appropriate to, the, to their department within the system. So our packages, we're able to build them off of MSIs, and we can also do custom packages. So if your organization has a custom piece of software that you use, we can package that up and push that out. One of the things we mentioned earlier about event management is that we're able to determine if there's been a change to these packages and automatically repair those based off of operational rules, things that we've been able to define. This is important, especially if there are applications out there that you find are constantly being needing to be repaired and sending people out to fix, we can take care of for you. So one of the things we just talked about was the operational rules. And this really is the heart of the BCM product. This is the ability to be able to create rules to automate this, the actions that you would normally do within your systems. So, Joel, one thing a customer told me is if he has to do anything more than twice, he wants to automate it. And that's one of the things he loves about BCM is being able to create rules to automate processes or anything that he would do manually a couple of times. There's no reason to repeat that. And instead, you can save that time and effort by creating one rule or a package, for example, and using that over and over again. Precisely, yeah. It's it's to make your job a lot easier. You're not spending a lot of time in the product. You can spend your time doing other things because you've said it once and now you can forget about it. You can keep moving on with your other important work. All right, so I'm going to go to wizard here and we'll go to uh, operational, operational rule creation. We'll take a look at some of the operational rules that come out of the box. So some of the operational rules we have are around monitoring. We can check, for instance, disk space. If disk space starts getting low, we can have it check it, define different parameters around it, and then we can go in the directory and file handling and actually maybe delete out a directory or an entry or file occurrences that may actually be filling up our hard disk and causing issues. Click OK. And now that operational rule is created for us, and now we can assign it to different groups, different users, as well as put this out on the My Apps for somebody to fix as they need to. We've taken almost every step that you would need to perform against an agent and put them here as a rule so that virtually anything that you need to do, whether it be rebooting, upgrading, checking a file structure, checking a registry, we have provided those steps here within the operational rules. So the next thing to talk about here was patch management. And this is where we're able to maintain your software version currency and also leverage that set it and forget it. Patches can be anything from operating system patches, their service packs, as well as to applications. And one of the things we allow is for things like automatic patch distribution and simultaneous patch distribution. With a patch distribution, what that means is that you're able to push patches at one time and leverage the reboot on the system rather than having to continually reboot the system and hope that the patch went and that it wakes up and that it's able to take the next patch. Patch jobs can be, you can define patch jobs to be automated or manual. And along automated, you can say only the critical patches or only the patches that are most impactful to your system get applied. And non-critical patches can wait to a different date or a different time. And as you can see, we're able to patch virtually every application that your organization has. By leveraging the Shavlik engine, we're able to query against the Shavlik library, find those updates and patches that are relevant to your system, pull those through, and then based off of your rules and your configurations, push those out to your devices on your schedule. That's great, Joel. So if I didn't have this tool, what would I have to do to patch my applications? You'd have to have, depending on how many applications you need to patch, you'd have to have enough agents to go out there individually on those machines and sit there and, and manually walk through and, and click through the installations for each one of those patches. How do I, how would I even get the patches? You have to go individually to each one of those manufacturers of, of the software and download them yourselves. 
That's huge. That would take forever to do manually. That is not scalable it, at all. That's right. And that's why Shavuot came together and pulled that all together for us. And that's why we leverage it within our systems so that you don't have to worry, did you miss a patch? Did you maybe not know that there was another piece of software that was somebody installed in your system that you forgot about or didn't know about that needs to be patched? That's a huge benefit in time savings. I can't imagine going to all the vendors' websites for all the applications that we have to get the patches and then trying to figure out how to roll them out and doing that manually. It's absolutely not scalable. Well, if you look at all the different products that we do have listed here, there's over 100 different entries here by just the products that we've installed within our systems. Yeah, can you imagine trying to find all the different patches for those and assuming that maybe some haven't even come out? For instance, Apache, we may have not even known Apache was in our system, but here's one patch. And anybody knows uh, with Apache, being a web server, if it doesn't have its patches, that becomes a vulnerability that can open a door right into your system. So the next piece that we're talking about here in our system is, is compliance. And you'll see two areas in here. We have custom compliance. So you can create compliance that is specific to your organization and specific to the needs that are associated to the industry that you work in, whether it be PCI, ISO, the different compliances there, HIPAA, or things that are we're finding most of our customers are leaning to is this is SCAP, or the Security Compliance Automation Protocol. If you haven't heard of SCAP, you probably will in the near future because it's something that the U.S. government government is pushing out among its agencies, as well as any agency that provides support to the federal government. And these things are items such as preventing USB devices from connecting into systems, or even maintaining and managing things like uh, password controls or, or firewall access into the system and making sure that that is not only enabled on a system, but that it's turned on and it's being leveraged. What the SCAP compliance does is look through these different jobs and these automated streams that come down from the uh, NIST, and we're able to look at those packages and then apply them to the systems and to the devices within your organization and now provide reporting to let you know which ones may not be compliant. And based off of the operational rules, you can set it up to automatically apply the operational rule to fix it and bring yourselves up in, into compliance quickly. Joel, how would that be done if I didn't have a tool like this? What would be the types of steps I would have to go through to get that information and to be in compliance and meet those criteria from SCAP and other industry requirements or certifications? Most organizations don't even do it at all if they if they don't have a tool like this to automatically check for them. To be able to go through, for instance, to check registry keys, that's just extremely time consuming. And to be able to pull through and to validate that it as you know, a value is set from zero to one. And when you have 20 to 30 different settings that you need to check, most organizations just don't have the time and the manpower to do that. So they just don't do it. Yeah, it seems like managing compliance isn't even really possible without a tool like BCM. It's really not. And we're talking compliance, not just along SCAP, but we're also talking compliance around like software deployment or device compliance as far as, you know, do we allow printers? Do we allow USB keys? If somebody finds a USB key out in the parking lot and decides they want to use it, they bring it in and plug it in their computer. Us being able to prevent that from being turned on and exposing our whole system to malware, those things are just almost impossible to keep on top of if you don't have a tool like this. And the other thing we want to talk about is with the software licensing. You know, we've talked about our application management. So with our application management, and software licensing. It's not just making sure that you have enough licenses, but you don't have too many licenses as well. We all hear about the audits where they come in and they fine you because you don't have that one extra license for Adobe Acrobat or for another piece of software. But we never hear where they write you a check when they find out that you've bought too many. And so this helps your departments to stay right on top of the, the software that they need to have and making sure that they don't have too little or too much. So I think one of the key benefits to managing that information is if I can run a report that tells me I have 10 machines that aren't even using a particular application, I could reclaim those licenses and give them to someone else instead of buying new licenses, which would keep me from spending additional money. So in addition to being able to uh, make sure I'm not using more than I'm supposed to, I can also reallocate those ones I'm not using and uh, use the investment I've already right. made. So, and that's vital, especially in large organizations where you have, may have hundreds of pieces of software 
that you need to maintain. With application management, not only can you do what Serena was talking about with the software license management, making sure you have the licenses that you need, but the other thing we can do too is determine if somebody really truly needs that license. So they say that they use this Adobe Creative Suite all the time and they need to use it because of their job. We can actually run monitoring on that that says they use this but they only use it once or twice a year. And maybe the new request was for somebody who's actually gonna use it on a weekly basis. We can reallocate that license from that one person who uses it two or three times a year and maybe find a different solution for them to use and allocate it somewhere else rather than purchasing another license. Another thing we have is the ability to schedule templates. So for instance, you may have a piece of software like iTunes. iTunes is a great non-productivity software that a lot of people use, but maybe during the day, it uses a lot of bandwidth at your location. So you want to prevent it from being used from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., but other times you're free with it being used. We can actually prevent software from being run at a specific time, as well as with an application manager. So we have a blacklist of software that people just can't use. They try to install it. We'll tell them, nope, you can't use this piece of software, and then we're, we shut it down. The great thing about it is, too, with our reporting, we can report on that and let you know what pieces of software people are, are trying to install in your system and if there's other steps you need to take. So one of the things that we want to talk about, as long as they're connected to the Internet, we don't need VPN to be able to do things like remote control or to deploy software or deploy patches to them. We can provide this level of support no matter where they're at. And this is great because if you talk to a service desk, a lot of them are gonna tell you that the first issue that people call up about is VPN. So if somebody has have access to their VPN, they're usually not getting this management that, that they require. We can take that VPN piece of the puzzle out and provide you a seamless management for these devices. Well, here's the question is, when would you use queries over a report? Is a query just for some quick information you need at this moment, whereas a report is something you can run regularly or schedule or email out to the people? Queries are how we set up and base a lot of our automation within the BCM product. For instance, our device groups are usually built off of a query. Is this person in this department or does this hardware have this specific uh, quality about it? Is it this operating system? Or does it have this patch level, but not this patch level? So a query is really helping you to identify a group based off of certain attributes. The reports then are able to leverage those queries and using some of our out of the box templates or some of our automated reports to combine some of these queries together to give you reporting such as, what is our overall patch status of our systems? or Show what is our overall hardware? What summaries can I gain from this hardware? You know, we're at two gig of RAM as opposed to four gig of RAM. Do we need to update those to get them, you know, to Windows 10 compliance, which is four gig of RAM and different things like that. So our reports are really going to drive the decisions that management's going to make. And we can automate these reports that they could be emailed or put into uh, dashboards for them to view and to leverage to make decisions throughout the system. So if you go back to that topology slide we talked about, we talked about integrating it. So we can integrate with your ITSM solution. And we talked about natively how we do this with Service Core, Remedy Force, and now with the uh, BMC Atrium CMDB. What this allows you to do is to be able to do things like take a remote control of a device. So our integrations allow us to leverage these tools that are within BCM natively. These tools are remote control or some of the direct access tools. For instance, being able to take a look at the file system, look at the registry, make changes to the registry, look at services. Or on this particular AMP client that we're looking at right now, I can look at its running processes and looking at this live system, I can end processes or I can run new processes. And the great thing about the remote control is that if you have this integrated with your system, you can leverage the REST API within the BCM tool so that it is triggered by your ITSM application. That way your agent's not having to open up multiple tools, but being able to leverage the power of BCM from right within your application. All right, well, thanks, Joel, for showing us all the great benefits and automation within BMC Client Management. Some of the things that we'd like you to take away with you are how managing and automating your endpoints provides results. If it provides results like cost reduction, 
improved satisfaction and productivity for your users, your end users, your help desk agents, and those who are managing the BCM tool. It helps you stay in compliance as well. Some things that are kind of unique to BMC client management are the native integrations we have with other BMC solutions like Remedy Force, Footprint Service Core, and Atrium CMDB. As Joel mentioned, one of the really great things is that VPN is not required. So if you have remote employees who don't even connect to VPN, as long as they're on the Internet, you can manage those endpoints. It's a very lightweight infrastructure, as we talked about. It does not require a lot of hardware and software uh, to set it up and run it and scale it based on the topology and architecture of BCM and how it works. That said, you can manage it on-premises, or we also have it available on demand if that's something that you want to put in the hands of BMC or one of our partners. So we encourage you to take a look at the product, try it out, and you can learn more at our website, bmc.com slash client management. Another good resource for you to look at is our communities page at BMC, as communities.bmc.com under client management. We have over 2,000 active participants who are asking questions and answering questions, as well as driving the development of our tool by being able to put in ideas and things that they would like to see and voting on those. As always, we want to thank you for your time and appreciate you spending a few minutes here as we talked about the BMC client management tool.